Rico, guys, uh, it is unlawful for anyone. Well, actually, what does it stand for, right? Let's 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 uh, let's see what it stands for first. So Rico stands for. <clears throat> excuse me, guys. The Racketeer Influence a Corrupt Organization Act is a United States federal law that provides for extended criminal penalties and a civil clause of any action of action for acts performed as part of an ongoing criminal organization. RICO was enacted by Section 901 of the Organized Crime Control Act of 1970. So that's what RICO is, right? And you guys are probably wondering, well, what the hell, like, wh how did it come about? Long story short, guys, and I talked about this on, uh, I think, on the last episode. Uh, RICO was created in the 70s, guys, because back in the 70s, public enemy number one for the FBI, right, was the mafia. La Cosa Nostra, all right? Our little thing, as they would say, I think, in, in Italian. Our thing. Uh, and the issue was um, the guys, right, these, these mafia guys would get arrested, right, but they wouldn't. And I'll tell you guys the story first before, I, and then we'll read through it. The, these guys would get arrested, and they could never pin anything on the guy that led to the hit, right? So, like, if I'm, let's say I'm, see, I already know I'm going to get hit with the fucking, uh, when I make this joke. How dare you? So, let's say I'm Tony, okay? Tony, hey, what's up? And then my my man Gino, right? Yeah, hey Gino, forget about it. All right, he <laughs> he tells me, hey, that guy owes me some money. Give him some uh some con some concrete slippers, okay? Throw them in the water in the water after, okay? Cool. So I go right, and I take Jimmy, right? And I and I throw, you know, I beat him up, right? Hey, where's the money, asshole? Boom, boom, boom. You know, beat him up, me and him, and, me and three of my boys, right? <laughs> we beat his ass. Throw him in the Hudson, right? He's swimming with the fishes, right? <laughs> and uh, I go back and I let my boss Gino know, hey, it's done. We got the money, buddy. Give him the money, right? And then they, they arrest me and, and my team, right? And I was the one that actually beat up the dude. Another guy put the cement shoes on him and another guy was just watching. Another dude was a, a, a getaway driver, right? So it used to be they would, they would arrest us and... You know, only one of us would get hit for the murder, right? The other guy's kind of like, eh, hey, well, you kind of were there, whatever, you know, it is what it is, blah, blah. But now with Rico, not only are they going to hit me with the murder and everything else, they're going to hit us all with racketeering, okay? Me, the getaway driver, the dude that was watching, the dude that was in the bathroom whacking it, what, uh, you know, because he wasn't, didn't have time. Whatever. Oh, we're all going down for racketeering, all right? He didn't even put the cement shoes on him. He was just there in the bathroom somewhere. We're all going to get hit with racketeering to include... Everyone in the chain that was involved in the organization to make that happen. So what RICO effectively does is it gives you a blanket charge against the entire organization because they're committing crimes in furtherance of the organization. So in this case, me giving them cement shoes because they didn't pay back a debt to the organization to send a message to increase our um, to increase our uh, our standing, right, our criminal standing. That is all considered in furtherance of the organization. So, bam, we're all going to get hit with racketeering and murder and all the other stuff. All right? So, that is how RICO laws worked. And this was enacted in the 70s to get people to cooperate, to get people stiffer penalties, etc. Because they would do stuff, they wouldn't cooperate, and they couldn't do nothing about it because they weren't able to attack the higher-ups that were the ones calling the shots like, hey, make him swim with the fishes. Hey, beat his, break his kneecaps. You know what I'm saying? They couldn't prove it. So the higher-ups were always insulated and protected and didn't really go to jail, all right? Even though they were the ones calling the shots. So finally, in the 70s, the FBI was able to use racketeering to go after the big mob bosses who were calling the shots, and they were able to charge everyone so that people were like, damn, I ain't going to, j I ain't going to jail for life for this. Fuck that. I'm a snitch. And then, bang, people started turning. People started turning, uh, you know, cooperating with the government, and bang, the FBI was able to start taking down the mafia because the mafia was literally... Public enemy number one for the FBI in the 70s, guys. They were running shit, all right? Especially, uh, you know, all over the place in Florida and the Northeast, New York, Rhode Island, California. Uh, you know, they were all over the different crime families, which if you guys want, I could do, uh, you know, uh, an episode on uh, Italian organized crime for y'all as well. Uh, Tony Stromboli. <laughs> Martin, as an Italian, I'm offended. Uh, How dare you? Sorry, bro. You, don't swim with the fishes. 